Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today guys, I thought I'd be taking a look at one, well, I actually did look at the We've Got Problems videos, and he basically just made a video I wanted to do for a little while now, ever since I saw the Labour candidate choices for, you know, the, the local election, which is gonna go massively wrong in every nuclear bomb scenario trying to be seen as possible. And, well, I thought I'd take a look at it and it's like, basically what we were having was the Labour leadership candidates, they were all trying to defend Jeremy Corbyn and their policies. And they were all so ideologically fucking stupid. I mean, I thought when I watched the Labour ca electoral uh, candidates on choice on the BBC's Newsnight, where it was the main four of them, was the fa the four main ones were until en Emily Thornberry was kicked out. I thought it was going to be really interesting what would come out of that one, and it was like, I just really went nuts at the screen half the time, because it just looks so stupidly fucking dumb. You know, the things that were coming out, and it was just like, well, at least Labour knows they fucked up, but no, nope, they haven't la realised that yet either. They've just not realised... You obviously travel the country a lot during the election. I certainly did too. I spoke to yeah. a lot of voters, and Brexit, as you know, was brought up an awful lot, oh, I agree particularly with, that. with Leave voters who thought that the policy for a second referendum was uh, overturning their vote. Well, it came up. I mean, you, you were a big architect of that it, position. It came up. Actually, that position was adopted firstly by the Shadow Cabinet and then by our you pushed party for it as well. conference. I thought it was the right policy. I thought we should have gone on, by the way, and actually said which side we would be campaigning for if there was a referendum. Do you still and think... I warned our party that if we looked indecisive, we wouldn't look like we were leading on this issue, but of course it came up. I think our biggest problem, in a sense, was that we didn't knock down that phrase, get Brexit done. I mean, we had a, a, a manifesto with lots and lots of policies in it. Boris Johnson had three words, and you we didn't knock it down. Fuck me. You're supposed to be the leader of the Labour Party, and you're blaming your own fucking shadow cabinet for this? Fucking hell, man. I mean, you were basically the idea of how the second independence referendum came to an actual near enough policy, cunt. Wow. The actual decipherness of you putting the shit on here now? What a fucking joke you are. Really? You're the one who proposed the second referendum, and that would have obviously pissed off everyone else. That's what she de Sylvie ends up saying. What the fuck? Honestly. You little bastard, and you're trying to get these people to vote for you next year junior voting? Good fucking luck with that one. Let's see what the next clip has to go on with. You said that you thought that was the right policy. Do you still think it was the right policy? Oh, yes, of course, because what we were doing was we were, we were fighting against a deal that we thought would be very damaging for our country. And, and, and it is important to remember that um, for month after month after month, and you will have seen this, I was standing there putting forward amendments to get a deal over the line. It was only when we were confronted with Theresa May's deal and then Boris Johnson's deal, which I believe will be damaging for the country, that we even entertained the question of, uh, of putting it back uh, for people to uh, agree or not agree. So um, we, I don't know how many times I pushed an amendment for a customs union, um, and we got within three votes of it. Had that succeeded, we would have left with a deal. Um, so we only moved on to the question of a second referendum to, to protect the country uh, against a damaging Brexit. And there you go, you heard it fucking again. And he, he says he respects Jeremy Corbyn, what he's done for the party. Did you forget what happened in the last general fucking election? You lost, like bombed out the bomb. Lost. You basically got annihilated by Nagasaki. That's what happened here. year. Holy shit, no wonder Bernie Sanders is going to lose exactly what, the way they're doing this year. Fuck me. Man, are you right in the head with this one? Like before you heard him saying about the bloody customs union. You know, don't leave the European Union at all, but just stay in a customs union and keep doing these backhanded fucking deals. So it actually works for the Labour Party, not for the Tory Party. You wonder why you lost. Fuck me. Right, so that's out of the way. 
So let's go and take a look at the Andrew Marshall with the deputy leader, I believe. Let's see what she's going to talk about immigration. Well, this is the one I've been looking forward to talk about. Let's go. Would Jeremy Corbyn have a place in your shadow cabinet then? Richard well, Bergen's answered um, the question. The, these questions that we get about who would be in the shadow, I am focused on winning this race. I'm not going to be presumptuous about what might happen afterwards. I'm very good friends with uh, Jeremy, spent a lot of time uh, with him in the last three and a half years. He's a friend and he's a colleague and I respect what he's done for our party, led us through very difficult times. But, um, okay. I, I, you know, I just want to stay disciplined and professional about what needs to happen next and that is that this campaign, which is a very positive campaign I'm running, um, needs to succeed and then we take the decisions thereafter. Well, I wasn't surprised about this fucking one. Funny enough, she just speaks about everyone in the Labour Party that wants to do exactly the same thing. It's not the fact that they want to extend the immigration things, they might as well just have an open fucking border. It's like what they're trying to do in the States right now, when the Democrats are trying to open the fucking border to everyone who wants to come in. Jesus Christ, you might as well have no borders at all. The UK might as not be called the fucking UK. And you're on about... She goes on about people who respect the system. Yeah. There's a good few people who do respect the system, but there's a shitload of them who don't respect the system, which will exploit it to the ends of denial, until the end of their fucking death, because they would have used up the system by then. Why do you think the NHS is fucked right now? Because in between people who are lazy shits, don't w waste the time for the NHS, or cause themselves such bodily harm that they have to be intervened into the NHS when they don't need to, you have people from other countries, such as the European Union or further countries, which were like, well, let's just go to U UK because we know you don't have to pay for health benefits there. Don't, if you don't like what I'm saying about that there, it's fucking true, isn't it? Because I've seen plenty of people who have like, oh no, look at me, I'm an immigrant, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And it's like, well, you're just benefiting our system. Yeah, there are ones who are like, okay, I want to be contributing to this country. Who the fuck says that's not a bad thing? I don't even know why Labour comes up with this stupid fucking thing. But the thing is, they want more immigration in this country. Does anyone know white people are min a minority in the London city alone? That's kind of terrifying. I mean, it's not racist, it's kind of terrifying to hear that. But she goes on to add even more shit, doesn't she? Let's go and keep a listen. Let's look a bit more at your policies. What is your own personal view of freedom of movement and extending freedom of movement? I think we've got to have a fair system. I think freedom of movement as it currently stands, as we leave the EU, will end. And we've got to have a fair system. We can't have a point system that actually doesn't recognise that actually our values and what we've no. stood for as a country about how people have come and contributed to this country is the most important. I tackled the, Nigel what? Farage on it during sure. the general election because I think it's disgusting what some of the, our politicians have said the Labour, to demigrate people that have come to our country and work and contribute here. The Labour conference passed a motion saying that it should be extended freedom of movement. Do you agree with that? I think that we should be celebrating people coming to this okay. country and working hard. I think there's a misconception that there's suddenly a wash, our country's a wash with people that are coming here getting free benefits, getting social mm. housing. It's just not true. People come to this country, they work hard. And we so have to have a fair system that people understand. She doesn't get this, does she? He's not asking you about if there should be a cut on immigration. No one wants a cut on immigration. We just want it controlled better than everyone in the EU going back and forward, no matter what it is, and getting all the benefits they've been getting for years without even earning a fucking dime for it. And then, you, and all he's asking you is, do you want to extend the movement of freedom of movement? How fucking easy is that the answer? But when she gets asked it again, she stupidly outly admits everyone should be allowed to come in. Everyone should be welcome. So you're just basically asking for open borders then, aren't you? You're not asking for EU migrants. You're not asking for people outside the EU. You're asking for everyone to come in, which in contrast counters 
act of open borders, doesn't it? Fuck me. I can't believe she's actually still trying to avoid the question. And like every time Andrew asks her, it's, it's such a simple fucking question after all. Fucking hell. It's crazy. Let's keep going. You kept your seat, but you lost 5,000 votes. And presumably you have talked to at least some of those people who were Labour voters and moved to the Tories, as they have done all across the country. And you must know that one of the issues that they were moving on was immigration. And it may be, it's a painful, hard lesson for the Labour Party, but maybe you are out of touch with your own voters when it comes to immigration. Are you fucking serious, man? Obviously. If you're a deputy leader, which you probably will be, would you be fighting to extend freedom of movement? I'll be fighting to make sure we have a fair system that's transparent, that recognises that our country no, has I... always had immigration and it's always been a positive okay, for this country. one more time. Would you be fighting to extend freedom of movement? I will be making sure that everyone's welcome in this country and contributes to this Everybody's country. Everybody's welcome. Not a hostile environment which this, country, which this government has created. Who the fuck has she been talking to? My God. Which Leave member or Leave voter have you talked to that hasn't been wanting the end of freedom of movement? The whole idea of Brexit was to get out of the Freedom of Movement Act in the first place. Fucking hell. That was one of the main things that we were wanting to get rid of, so we were stuck outside the European Union's policy on it. Because we are definitely not benefiting from it. Plus, it was Labour policy to move to open borders. That was the whole idea of the Labour government was to go in, was to go into full open borders. And I'd love to know who you're talking about when you're about these lead seats as well. Because they sound very fascist, don't they? But the thing is, they're probably your folk who now, who didn't vote for you, now they'd be demonised as racist and all that. Because that's what you and the Lib Dems like to do to people, isn't it? Fuck me. You're like, oh man, I just don't even know what to think about this sometimes. It's fucking insane. What do these people think we actually are? Stupid? Then you call us who don't support your party racist? Well, you're definitely sex offenders, some of them, aren't you? Or you're racist in your own types, aren't you? Fucking hell. Did you hear that thing about Jimmy Savile or the rapist thing? Fuck me. Let's keep going. A lot. There was a couple of things that my electorate told me. One was that they didn't think that we had a coherent policy on Brexit. They were angry about that. Mm. They felt that our offer was more of a retail offer and that it wasn't achievable. They felt that we wasn't going to keep the country safe and they were concerned mm. about that. And they wanted a fair system on immigration. They didn't say they wanted to end freedom of movement. They said they want a fair system. This country they heard has the always I'm, I'm been sorry, they a heard the system. Labour Party apparently being in favour of almost open borders when it came to it comes to immigration, extending freedom of movement, which is what we were talking about. And that's what a lot of people didn't like. Well, you see, this is the interesting thing, because a lot of people think that the Red Wall seats Midlands and the North is that we're all somehow, you know, closet racists and we don't like people coming to this country. Mm. It's completely untrue. We're actually quite a migrant country anyway and have been, you know, that my, mm. I've got a huge okay. Irish community and they've been there for decades as well as our Windrush mm. generation that's been I mean, attacked. Be fair, so it's... actually what we want and what my voters say to me is they want, they want a transparent fair immigration policy that recognises contributions that people make to this country. And to want some kind of immigration controls does not make you racist. I mean, it, you no, it doesn't. Absolutely, we accept it that. OK, here's the child with the golden fucking nuggets, isn't it? Where did you come from? You nearly won the election. No, you didn't. And if you're only about 2017 won, you didn't win that one either. Fuck me. Oh man, this this guy's just a bag of fucking bolts, isn't it? And you really want to know what's inside the bag of bolts? No, you don't. You know what's fucking in it? Jesus. What he told us, he said people brought up the leadership of the Labour Party, they brought up Brexit, they thought the manifesto was overloaded, and in a number of places they brought up anti-Semitism. So there are a number of reasons. Do you agree with that from Sir Keir Starmer? Well, all of these things uh, have been mentioned, but I think some of them are linked, for example, uh, when uh, Keir says that they brought up the leadership of the Labour Party and the overloading of the manifesto, I think lots of these things came down to trust. And so in 2017, we had the same leader, uh, a manifesto of socialist policies, and we nearly won. 2019, same leader, manifesto of socialist policies, and we got smashed. Fucking hell, here we go again. Same fucking line. Oh, yeah, Brexit definitely did have an involvement in this, didn't it? Yes, we 
fucking know that. And then just to turn around and deny that you were not opposition against Brexit? Why do you think we spent three years arguing about Brexit for when we could have been out by now? Labour and it's all the Mona parties, which funny enough won a lot of seats in 2017, was the exact reason why we had to do the general election again to get rid of the fuckers who were trying to stop in the first place. And funny enough, they were Lib Dems and Labour. Which both enough lost in the 2019 election. Thank God. But to turn around and completely deny the actual events happened? Oh man, that's... You're not even going to blame Jeremy Corver for this? This is just fucking stupid. It's actually gold how the, any of these people are actually in power. Fucking hell. And so I, Do you think it's more about Brexit than Keir Starmer is saying, though? I, I, I respectfully disagree with him on his analysis in relation to Brexit, and I think Brexit did overshadow the election. And so when people didn't trust us to deliver the policies in the manifesto, what people often say to me on the doorstep is, you couldn't even get Brexit done, and now you're promising this. So I think it went to the heart of this. And it's also why I think that the people were successful in portraying Jeremy not as an insurgent anymore, but more of an establishment figure, which he's certainly not, because people had the idea that we were somehow trying to block the will of the people in relation to the outcome of so the referendum. And in which world do you think anyone was actually going to support Jeremy Corbyn in this at all? Do you think they really wanted an insurgent in charge instead of something else? We all know who Jeremy Corbyn supports. He supports the IRA. He supports terrorist organizations. He probably supports ISIS right now. He supports dictators in foreign countries. And even when he gets asked these questions, he couldn't answer them anyway. It was fucking gold. Because no one wants these social fucking policies that's in it. What world are you fucking living in? Wow, are you just deluded or fucking stupid, man? Honestly, I'd really love to bloody meet you. When it keeps the policies, hope you're fucking nice in real life. Bloody hell. Many people in the Labour Party think, and, and Keir Starmer <clears throat> reflects that a little bit, that the manifesto was a problem as well. That it wasn't credible. People wouldn't believe it. Do you accept that? No, I don't accept that. I'm proud of the manifesto uh, we stood on. I think the manifesto contains policies which contain the solutions to many of the problems faced by communities and all that diversity across the country. And what I would say is that the socialist policies in the manifesto were not the reason we lost the general election. It wasn't because of the £10 an hour minimum wage, taking rail, mail and water into public ownership, that we lost the general election. We lost the general election because it became the Brexit election I mean, some that Boris Johnson say, wanted. Some people listening to that will say, you know, you need to get real. It was the worst defeat for 85 years. Of course the manifesto was part of it. Or, or is ideological purity coming up with the right solutions better than winning? Thank fuck Sophie said it. Is this guy really that fucking deluded? I actually thank you, Sophie, for pointing that out. It's nuts. How the hell do you not see any of the policies that you were proposing were going to fuck everything up? You were proposing a marriage tax. You were going to put national, um, you got to make na the rail national, the royal mail national, the water national, the energy companies national, you know. Where the fuck do you think the money comes from? Oh wait, we just tax people who earn decent jobs. You know, £10 an hour. But the thing is, you just ridicule them with tax. In which world do you not realise the fucking... Oh man, this guy's just gold, isn't he? In which world do you not realise this policy of the entire manifesto was the entire reason it fell? For God's sake, are you real, men? Jesus Christ. I actually can't believe I'm listed any of this. Bloody hell. Quickly, you told HuffPost this weekend um, that if Jeremy Corbyn was Shadow Foreign Secretary, that would be ideal. So would you like the contenders for the leadership to be considering giving him that job in their shadow cabinets? Well, I think that if they become leader, they should uh, consider all the options. I, the point I was making in the interview is that Jeremy Corbyn has made a fantastic contribution to socialist politics in our country. Uh, he's made many gains in the Labour Party. He's made an anti-austerity party, a democratic members-led party, so an anti-war an anti internationalist party. I think that he'd do a great job. Uh, as I, but the point I was making in the interview is that 
it's not the end for Jeremy Corbyn. He's got a long political career ahead of him, should he wish. He's 10 years younger nearly than Bernie Sanders, who also has a, a big political career ahead of him. So I'm sure whatever Jeremy wants to do, he's got a big contribution to make to our party. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, God. Really? Get real, men. Which benefits did Jeremy Cor Corbyn give to the fucking Labour Party? What efforts? What gains? What profit margins did he fucking give? He's the whole main reason. Him, his policy, his party, his politics, his socialism, his IRA supporting. No fucking wonder he lost. They were all fucking terrible. If you want to give a full manifesto of what the... You know, of Jeremy Corbyn's benefits, uh, he destroyed the Labour Party, he destroyed the Labour Party, he gave, he got rid of the working class, he demonised the working class, he uh, made everyone sound, feel shit about themselves who were voting Labour, he did everything in his power to make everything sound bad from the Labour's point of view, and he just did everything else that didn't sound anything that made fucking sense. What world are you fucking living in, men? My God. Sorry, but fucking hell. Let's keep going. Now, I know you don't like being described as the continuity Corbyn candidate, but uh, Jeremy Corbyn, can I remember, only last month at a meeting said this. It's an absolute pleasure to be here alongside Becky Long-Bailey, our candidate for leader. Was that unhelpful? Not unhelpful. I mean, Jeremy and myself are friends, but it's quite disrespectful sometimes when I'm termed the continuity candidate. I've always been strong to my principles. Everybody knows what I believe in and I'll never deviate from that. But I'm very much my own person and to mm. suggest I'm a continuation of any individual is quite disrespectful, disrespectful well, not least because I'm a woman, quite frankly. It may not be about, about gender but about politics because our, by our candidate, did he not mean that you are the candidate of the Socialist Campaign Group, which well, I, well, I Jeremy am. Corbyn, John McDonald, Diane Abbott and you and Richard Bergen. I am the candidate of the Socialist Campaign Group, but I'm also the candidate of various trade unions and indeed a number of constituency parties who've nominated me. And I thank them all for their support. Well, this sounds like a great start. And the fact that, uh, yeah, quite, your name's uh, Jeremy Corbyn is good. That's basically why he named you that. It's like, it's like he looked in the mirror and he saw, this is what I'd look like as a female. It's basically four just turning six. Marvel caught me to it already. Shit. Anyway, it's it doesn't help. And the f hear the fact that she's on the same lines as Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, and she's on the socialist policies. Okay, well, this is going to be a few, good few fucking years then, because, you know, these socialist policies seem to go very far, because Jeremy Corbyn went really high when he, you know, lost the general election and... 15 other things he fucking did. Bloody hell. Keep going. I'm, I'm ready to hear more. In the same context, I asked Angela Rayner about free movement, extending free movement, which your party has voted for. Do you believe in extending free movement rights? My own personal view on this, Andrew, is I am in favour of free movement, but we've got to be pragmatic and realise the position that because we're in. a lot of your voters are not, or potential Labour voters, left the Labour Party giving you the worst, I think, election defeat since 1935 and went to the Conservatives on precisely this issue. Well, what I'm wondering, have you changed your mind at well, all Well, that's on this? right, but whether, whatever we believe on freedom of movement, we're not in government. We have got a Conservative government with a huge majority. And our role now as an opposition is to make sure that when the government formulates its new immigration system, it's based on fairness, it's based on values, not targets. It ends the hostile environment. It ends the no recourse to public funds. It extends voting rights for all migrants who come to this country. And it's about instilling a system of fairness. Oh, that's cute. Blaming the Tories for everything because they lost the election. <laughs> and then she fucks it up. So she basically just admits she wants to open borders because she just wants to ridicule them into everything that they're going to do with the point based policy which i am actually a massive fan of by the way and which is like andrew ma said is exactly why the labor party lost all their seats because they didn't have a strong stance on immigration if it is for the working class don't privilege the people who aren't from this country you dopey bin fucking hell wow jesus christ some of these people 
And if she's actually going to base the opinions of the Tory party on values than targets, that means we're going to have way more social justice policies introduced, isn't it? So Labour Party has not learned a thing, and I was actually hoping she might have learned a bit. But, oh well, at least Labour died strong, eh? <laughs> and as you heard her there say, she wants to take in more immigrants, or more refugees, or whatever the hell name she wants to give them, because we all know the difference between refugees, immigrants, and so on, but I don't think we do, so I might have to make a video to explain what the fuck they all mean. Wow, I didn't actually think I, I need to make with these ones, but it looks like the MPs are still trying to figure out what each kind of class of people who come to the country is. And also a thing of, she wants to give them voting rights. So that's how you're going to win a general election, is it, you little dirty latter? You're going to import more people so they can vote for you. This sounds like what happened in Germany a few fucking times. But the thing is, if you're going to confuse refugee with immigrant, one flees a war, one is doing for economic benefit of themselves, if this is how you're going to do your benefit social thing, don't count me in it, and don't count a lot of people in this country too. Even the ones who are immigrated to this country won't probably back this idea either. So, I'm going to end the video here. I'm not sure if you thought this was just a massive rant, or just a little talk through of my opinions. They weren't as strong as the We've Got Our Problems video himself, but it was still good to use the content for processing my opinions so you guys could get to see what I think of it myself. So if you enjoy this channel, I hope you do, please be sure to like, share and subscribe, but especially subscribe so it looks like I'm actually doing something right. If you think this is a fascist channel, it's not, but we always stand on a good policy of my own beliefs and many other people's beliefs in this country too, which are rightfully so not racist. Because I'm not a racist myself, but the thing is, we need to control our immigration because when the country has a state of housing crisis, when we have to build a new house every seven minutes because there's too much houses, I would blame the immigrant crisis, sorry, crisis, quite especially the, one of the problems. And if there are people going to come into this country that seeking refugees, you have went through 15 countries with established refugee stances called the European Union. So I'd like to know where that works. So as I said before, if you like this video and you want to see any more content of mine, please be please sure to no ring the notification bell, subscribe to the channel, and we hope we have a good day and hope you have a great one. So thank you and have a good day. Thank you.